thou be a wild olive tree were grafted in among them. So the wild olive tree was already broken off. The ones that were breaking off now are the natural branches, which is the Jews. So since they were broken off because of unbelief, because they didn't believe in Yahweh, Yahweh was a stumbling block onto them. And that wild olive tree was grafted in those Hellenistic Jews, those uh, uh, romanticized Jews, those northern kingdoms scattered abroad, they were grafted in among them. And with them partakest of the root, their ancestors, and fatness of the olive tree. You see that? Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. The house I answered him and said, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Shemaya Sha'ala, Yahweh, Allah, Yahweh, Achad, Aman. Aman. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. It's good, y'all. All right. We're going to get right into it. We'll get right into it. Let's go to Ezra chapter nine. Um, today we're going to be going over uh, Romans 10, but primarily Romans 11. We're going to go into some mysteries that uh, even is some Israelites don't understand. Right. Uh, the, the engraftment. Uh, provoked to jealousy by a foolish and no nation. All right? Ezra 9 and 1. This is Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. Now when these things were done, uh -huh. the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land. So and does anybody know this account that's happening here? Read it again. Ezra 9, verse 1. Now when these things were done, the princes came to the came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land. Go ahead. Doing according to their abominations. So we didn't separate ourselves from the people of the land. Shaquat? Isn't this where the Levites started off intermarrying? Intermarrying. I'm going here for a reason, right? Kapash? They put, they put away their wives. Right. They put away their wives and the children they had with these wives. Uh -huh. Read. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, uh -huh. doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Go ahead. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves. They intermarried. Read. And for their sons. Uh huh. So that the holy seed have mingled. So that the holy seed have mingled themselves. Read. With the people of those lands. Uh huh. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers. Have been chief in this in this trespass. So this is what began to happen. Okay, everybody understand that. 
All right, let's go to chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 1 uh -huh. of Ezra. Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, uh -huh. there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation go ahead. of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. Go ahead. And Shekaniah, Shekaniah, Shekaniah. Shekaniah, the son of Jehan, <laughs> one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, we have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives. So they put away all their wives that they married from other nations. Go ahead. And such as are born of them. And such as were born of these wives. So what were these children? Israelites. Israelites were cast away. I need you to keep this in your mind. Go ahead. According to the counsel of my Lord uh -huh. and of those that tremble at the commandments of our God go ahead. and let it be done according to the law. Let's get some more context. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. Start there. Y'all got it? What's going on here? Verse 1. Verse 23. Huh? Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. One. 23. 23. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, mm -hmm. of Ammon, and of Moab. Go ahead. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, uh -huh. but according to the language of each people. So they began to follow after the customs of who? Mm -hmm. Their mothers, the heathen. You understand? Read. And they, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod. Verse 25. Up. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Go ahead. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? So Solomon is a prime example of him sinning, doing this. Go ahead. Yet. Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. You see that? Read. Verse 27. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all of this great evil, to transgress against our God and marrying strange wives? And one of the sons of Joiada, the son of Elisha, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sinbalet, the Horonite. Therefore, I chased them from me. Go ahead. Remember them, O oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites, thus cleansed I them from all strangers, and appointed the words of the priests and the Levites, every one in his business. So I'm just going here for context. So you see that Israel, during from Babylonian going into Persian captivity, began to defile themselves with marrying strange wives from other lands. So when this began to happen, you see that they kicked out the wives and the children who were Israelites. You understand? Uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 5. Ecclesiastes 3 and 5. 
This is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 5. Once again, I'm going all here because, like I say in almost the past couple of lessons I've been going to, everything is going to add up at the end. Come, Ecclesiastes 3 and 5. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones so there's a, together. A little slower. Huh? Read, read it again. A time to cast away stones. A time to cast away stones. So there was a time where these children had to be cast away. Read. And a time to gather stones together. And a time that these children that were cast off, there's a time for them to come back. What are they, how are they coming back? Through Christ. Because Christ died for them. You understand? This was the point of Christ. It's not just northern and southern kingdom. It's all of his children scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So that all Israel may be saved. I don't have to do that. Uh, let's go to Acts 2. 5. Acts 2 and 5. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, mm -hmm. devout men out of every nation under heaven. You see these Jews are under every nation under heaven. Jump to verse 9. Parthians, 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 go ahead. And Medes, uh huh. And Elam Elamites, Elamites, go and ahead. the dwellers in Mesopotamia, the dwellers in Mesopotamia, go ahead. And in Judea, uh huh. In Cappadocia, in Cappadocia, go ahead. In Pontus, go ahead. And Asia, go ahead. Phrygia, go ahead. And Pamphylia, uh huh. And Egypt, and the parts of Libya about Cyrene, Cyrene. Cyrene, and strangers of Rome. And what? Strangers of Rome. And what? Strangers of Rome. This is why I went here. Because we're going into the book of Romans. So Paul was sent to Israelites in Rome. Come. Huh? Let's go to, uh, jump to Acts uh, 22 and 25. We're going to see who, well, who was a Roman? This is Acts chapter 22, verse 25. Go ahead. And as they bowed him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurions that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? So who was Roman? Paul. Paul was a Roman. But he also was an Israelite. Somebody got to go on mute, man. I got to stay on mute, man. Read it again. <clears throat> this is Acts chapter 22, verse 25. Uh -huh. And as they bowed him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? So Paul was a Roman. That's why I went here. Right? But Paul was an Israelite. Right. You see how simple that is? Apayat, go to the, uh, the picture I sent you, the first source. <clears throat> I want you to read that. No, read everything from the top. <clears throat> read the book. Uh, show the book first. Go ahead. This is the makers of ancient strategy. And this example and in others that could be discussed from around the empire, it is difficult to to dis, dis, distinguish the Romans from their subjects. It's difficult to distinguish the Romans from their subjects. Who's their subjects? The people who are in captivity underneath them. The people who are subject underneath them. Why? Because the people who are in subject underneath them are following their customs. Read. 
a procedure made even more complicated because natives were enfranchised, mm -hmm. took Roman names. So natives of what? The places that Rome was conquering were enfranchised, kind of like being Hellenized and took on Roman names. Read. And, and many cannot be distinguished in the historical records from ethnic Italians. Ethnic Italians, oh, like the Italian band. Anyway, keep reading. For example, while several of Herod's military officers had Roman names. Several of Herod's military officers, Jews, had Roman names. Go ahead. We do not know if they were enfranchised Jews. So they, they was like, yo, we don't know if they was Jews. Go ahead. Or soldiers uh -huh. imported uh -huh. or borrowed from Rome's lick Legionary armies. Legionary. Legionary armies. Legionary armies. So you had Israelites with Roman names following after Roman customs. Just like today, Barack. That's right. You see that? Papa, you got something? Yeah, yeah, uh, Just talk loud, huh? Yeah, I don't know if any of y'all ever read a book of uh, Machiavelli and whatnot, but uh, he even describes in there that we had whole legions of Israelites, Roman legions. Facts. That's a fact. Let's go to the next source. Pull up the next source, huh? Go down. Start reading. This is Project New Son Sons of Israel in Caesar's service. Sons of Israel in Caesar's service. Go ahead. Jewish soldiers in the Roman military. Jewish so Israelites in the Roman military. Kind of like a Jake in the military now. Or a Jake police officer, a Jake correctional officer, right? A damn a, a Jake Christian. <laughs> Go ahead. The participation of Roman Jewish soldiers in the army of Imperial Rome often goes unrecognized. This is mainly a result of a lack of recognition on the part of the scholars who wish to use rabbinic rabbinic rabbinic, rabbinic sources as the benchmark for Jewish practice. In the imperial age, it is also difficult to identify Jewish soldiers, many of whom had Greek and Latin names. Many of whom had Greek and Latin names, kind of like Timothy right. or Titus, right? Read. Unless, unless they are specifically identified as Jews, or a found in the Jewish context, such as dedicatory inscriptions from a synagogue, nonetheless, by using a variety of sources from the period it is possessable, possible. possible to appreciate the depths and breadth of Jewish service in the Roman legions, from the time of Caesar down to the early fifth century, mm -hmm. there were Jews who served as simple foot soldiers, influential generals. And they were foot soldiers and also influential generals. Go ahead. Like Tiberius Julius Alexander and Jewish military units, such as in Ragai and Amesani, Ludaya. I do me. I do eat, regardless of their relationship to the Orthodox Jewish communities of the time, the service of Roman Jews in the apparel armed force must be recognized. You don't got to read no more. If y'all want the source, I got it. I post it in the back, or you can text me directly. I'll send the source, right? Um, I went here to show who Paul was writing to. He's writing to Israelites in Rome. 
Everybody understand that? Let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 35 real quick. Because Christians like to go to these two chapters like if they didn't just read chapter nine. We all know what chapter nine says, right? But Christians like to go to Romans 10. They like to go to Romans 11. And what they like to do is say, well, right here, <laughs> talking about Israel only, but when they're not understanding the context or even the historical uh, environment that Paul is in, right. they don't understand the post-captivity names of Israel. They don't understand these things. Read. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, mm -hmm. and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, Go ahead. which divideth the sea when the waves are of roar. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts is his day. Mm -hmm. If those ordinances depart from before me. Listen, if the sun doesn't exist no more, if the moon doesn't, if the stars fall from the sky, God, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation well, before me. Well, guess what? That never happened. Right. So Israel's always going to be a nation that the Lord loves above everybody. Every Israelite. I want you to keep that in mind. Every, from the gangbangers to the drug dealers, every Israelite on earth, the Lord loves them. That's why Christ died for them. Come. Romans 10. This is Romans chapter 10, verse one. Brethren, my heart desire in prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So what's the context? That he wants Israel to be saved. That's the context. Verse, let's go to verse 14, let's jump down. Matter of fact, yeah, verse 14, jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. How then? Listen to this. See, Paul, let me tell you something about Paul. Master at poetry. Master. And it's going to fly over a lot of people's heads what he's talking about. But onto his prophets, he revealed the secrets. And just as it says in Proverbs, right, I believe it's 25 and 2, a king searches out matters. God hides the secret things, but a king searches them out. Read. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So how can an Israelite outside of the land call on God whom they haven't believed? Read. And how shall they believe? And how do you believe in God and in Christ? Go ahead. And him. Of whom they have not heard. If they've never heard of him. This is what Paul is saying. Go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how are they going to hear without a preacher? <laughs> how? Go ahead. And how shall they preach except they be said? And how can they preach except they be taught? and be sent out to teach. Read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of how peace. How beautiful is the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Y'all know what this is? Isaiah. Isaiah 52 and seven. Let's go there real quick, then we're gonna jump back. This is Isaiah chapter 52 verse seven. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, Go ahead. that publishes peace. That what? That publishes peace. Go ahead. That bringeth good tidings of good. That bringeth good tidings. The gospel. Go ahead. That publishes salvation. 
that said unto Zion, that said unto who? That said unto Zion, Go ahead. thy God reigneth. That said unto the children of Israel, thy God reigneth, man. Go ahead. Back to uh, Romans. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 16. Mm -hmm. But they <clears throat> but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Isaiah 53. Lord, who believe you don't got to go there. Lord, who believed this report of this man that's going to be pierced in the hands and die for the sins of Israel? Every Israelite. Go ahead. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go ahead. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the end of the world. Go ahead. But I... But I say, did, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy. I will provoke you to jealousy. Go ahead. By them that are no people. By them that are no people. Go ahead. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Manasha, who's this, these people that he's going to use to provoke Israel? No, the castaways, the outcasts, not just Northern Kingdom. It's every Israelite, because who is Paul talking to? He's talking, this, this letter is dealing with them that know the law. That's Romans 7 and 1. That's why you got to understand context. So Paul is speaking to the authority of Israel. Who is who? The Pharisees, the Sadducees. That's who he's talking to, the scribes. The ones that be like, who is this uncircumcised Philip? Who, who the hell is this dude with this tattoo on? Get him out of here, man. That's how they were treating people. Looking down upon people. I'm holier than that. Right? Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 32. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32. You don't even know what verse. You're already screaming it out. You're powerful, man. Uh, we starting at... Yeah, we're going to start early. Uh, yeah, verse 15. You heard my breakdown already? You going off? Oh, yo, you going off, oh, brother? Yo. Go ahead. But Jeshurun. But who? But Jeshurun. Go ahead. Wax fat. But Jeshurun wax fat. Anybody know what this means? Never did for Israel. Eve's what? Uh, uh, when they said it made was it made fat, right? It means it what does who is Jeshurun? Oh, Israel. Is it all of Israel? Uh, Somebody get it. Barack, get that for me, Yeah. Uh, uh, read, read it in the Hebrew first. Okay. Yashua 1, right? Yep. It's Yashua 1. Go ahead. The upright one. The what? The upright one. The what? The upright one. Who was the upright people? Was it all of Israel? Romans 3 and 1. You're correct, huh? Not all of the southern kingdom, the Jews of the land. Oh, now hold it. I'm, I got that in the notes. Hold that though. Yeah. This is Romans chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. What advantage then has the Jew? What advantage then has the Jew? Go ahead. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Go ahead. Much every way. Much what? Much every way. Much every way. Go ahead. Chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Because unto them were committed the oracles of God. So they were the upright ones. The ones that kept the laws. The ones that had the scrolls. The ones that taught of the prophets. Taught of the roots. You understand? Back to Isaiah, I mean, Jerem um, Deuteronomy, slack here. Back to Deuteronomy 32 and 15. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. Go ahead. 
But Jeshulun waxed fat and thick. Thou art waxing fat. Uh -huh. Thou art grown thick. Thou art converted, covered. covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They lightly esteemed Christ. This is a prophecy. This is the Song of Moses. This is prophetic. They, 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 they said, he, I, he was cool. Go ahead. Verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Go ahead. To gods whom they knew not, the new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Go ahead. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. See, they didn't care about Christ. They wanted to worry about their position of power because they were following after traditions of men. They forsook the laws of God and would rather worry about what Rome can give them than what the Most High can give them. Read. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Abhorred them. He abhorred them. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. He abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and daughters. So the people on top, the ruling class, the men who knew the law like the back of their hand but didn't understand it. They treated the sons and daughters like garbage. Let's get that real quick. Hold, hold, uh, get, uh, Abadia, get James. Chapter five, I believe it is. Who no. Now James one and one says what? To the twelve tribes scattered abroad. So when you read James five, he's talking to Israelites about Israelites. Read James five and one. Huh? I did. I did. Yeah. Go to now, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are mother moth eaten. So go to now, ye rich men, rich men of who? Israel. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth eaten. Jump down to verse four real quick. I want to get to the point. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by, by frauds, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. 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 The Sabbath. So these are Israelites oppressing Israelites. Just like when you go back, we're going to jump back to Deuteronomy 32 now, when it says, because of the uh, provoking of his sons and his daughters. This is Israelites oppressing Israelites. Israelites looking down upon other Israelites. Read. Verse 20. Verse 20 of Deuteronomy chapter 32. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very foreign generation. Children in whom is no faith. Children in whom is no faith. These Jeshurun, the upright ones, the Jews of the land, the Pharisees. Read. They have moved me to jealousy, which that is which is not God. Mm -hmm. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Go ahead. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. He's going to provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Isaiah 7 and 8. This is Isaiah chapter 7, verse 8. Yes, all right. For the head of Syria is Damascus. Mm -hmm. 
and the head of Damascus is risen. Mm -hmm. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head that of Ephraim. Hold on, that it be not a people. So who's not a people? The Northern Kingdom. Sirach uh, 50, 25, I believe it is. 25. Huh. This is Sirach. Sirach 50 and 25. Huh? This is Sirach chapter 50, verse 25. There be two manner of nations. There be two manner of nations. Go ahead. Which my heart abhorreth. That my heart abhorreth. And the third is no nation. And the third is not a nation. Go ahead. They that sit upon the mountain of Samaria. They that sit upon the mountain of Samaria, northern kingdom. Go ahead. And they that dwell among the Philistines. And they that dwell among the Philistines. Those are Danites. Just wait, wait for the the the, the, Dan, the Dan the Danite nation is coming. I mean the Danite nation. The Danite breakdown is coming back. I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna have to break it down again. All right, read. And that foolish people that dwelleth in Shechem. And this foolish people that dwelleth in Shechem. Northern kingdom. Tom? Tom. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. Okay. Y'all need to just whoever get it first. How racing each other. I hear it. That is verse three, <laughs> verse three. Yeah. But we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. So we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Go ahead. Dis disobedient. Disobedient. Deceived. Uh -huh. Serving divers lust and pleasure. Go ahead. Living in malice and envy. Hateful and hating one another. Go ahead. But after that, the kindness of love and love of God, our Savior, Toward man appear. Go ahead. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Go ahead. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And these are. Speaking to who? The Hellenized Jews. So who's also a part of those people who are going to provoke them to jealousy? Jews. It's not just Northern Kingdom. This is every Jew outside of the land. There is no other people in the Bible who are ever described as a people of no nation and a foolish people. Can't find it. I looked. I tried. It's not there. Back to Romans. Read verse uh, 19 again. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. Mm -hmm. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. And by a foolish nation, I'm going to anger you. Now, let's just go straight to the point. Let's go to, now, let's read uh, 11 and 1. It says, Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Mm -hmm. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Context starts out right away. Has God cast away his people? La ah. Barak, you got some? For context, chapter 10 began with Israel and ended with Israel. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11 does the exact same thing. Exact same thing. But what was before both of those chapters, Ak? Chapter 9. That's right. It's, it's like chapter, like, like I don't understand. I, I don't I don't get it. I'll be trying to understand, like, bro, what are you reading? I don't see that. Verse 2. Verse 2. 
God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Well, God, God did not cast away his people, which he foreknew. That's back in the days. That's the roots. The first fruits. Keep that in mind. Read. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Mm -hmm. Well, ye not what the scripture said of Elias, how he making intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets mm -hmm. and dig down thine altars, mm -hmm. and I am left alone, and they seek my life. And wasn't that happening? Weren't the disciples and the apostles being persecuted? By who? The Jews. Yeah, of course. Uh, we we expect to be uh, 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 attacked by other nations, but it was our own people, man. The Pharisees, the, the people at top, who was like, "Uh, uh, he's gonna take away our nation. He's gonna take away our seat of power that the Romans gave, that the massa gave." Right. Mm. Massa. Breathe. Verse four. But what said the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. Uh, he reserved unto himself a completion of men. That's what 7,000 represents. A completion of men that are what? Who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. That have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. They're not going to, they're going to cast away those Roman idols and all those things that they grew up with. Those Greek idols. Everything that they came up with, they're going to say, nah, man, this is the truth. But how can they know the truth that Paul just said, unless they learn and hear the truth by somebody who teaches it to them? You were going to say something? Hey, there's nothing new under the sun. You go back to when the Lord said the Spirit was all overwhelming us. Right. That's because of our intervention. Exactly. And what we saw well, that, that goes all the way back to the flood. It goes all the way back. There's nothing new under the sun. The sons of God, the chosen line, seen the daughters of men that they were fair. It's the same thing. It's the same spirit. Read. Verse four. But what said the answer? Nah, verse five. Verse five. Even so then at this present time. Even so then at this present time. So he's saying this is happening now. <laughs> During the time of Paul. This is nothing. Uh, 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 how can you say super prophetic? He said, yo, this is happening right now, my man. Right. Go ahead. Even so then at this, at this present time. Also. There is a remnant. There's of, a remnant. Go ahead. According to the election of grace. According to the election of grace. And Israel was his elect. That's Isaiah 45 and 4. Keep reading. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, Work is no more work. It sounded confusing, right? He's just talking to people who are boasting in their garments and their fringes. And I was circumcised on the eighth day under the law of Moses, brother. I kept 82 Passovers. But then you see somebody outside of the land getting in the synagogue now. Coming to the Lord now. And you're like, hold on, man. You see what I did? My whole life I was serving you, Lord. Right. Keep reading. Verse 7. What then? Israel had not obtained that which he seeked for, but the election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded. And the rest were blinded. Read. Verse 8. According as it, as it is written, God has given them the spirit of, of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, 
unto this day. Go ahead. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block. Let their table, meaning their establishments, everything they have, be a snare onto them. So they trust more in their political power and their position of power more than the Messiah that died for them. And it became a snare and a stumbling block and a trap and they were blinded. They didn't see the bigger picture. Read. And a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow, and bow down their back away. Go ahead. I this say, is it right here. It's the Christian's favorite right here, boy. We're about to see it right now. Romans 11 and 11. Go ahead. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Have they? Matter of fact, we're going to read it all the way through. Then we're going to backtrack. Go ahead. Read it again from the top. I say then, have they stumbled that they shall fall? God forbid. But rather, do their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. You see that, brother, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're talking about, though. The nations. You see, the nations rose up in power, and this is their heaven. Even Israelites break it down like that. Read it again. Verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled? Have they what? Have they stumbled? G4417. Barack, I need you to be on my uh my concordance guy. G4417. G4417 yeah. is for tail, it is stumbled, it is <clears throat> to trick, that is figuratively to err. Okay, you can stop. You good? It means, it's a, for first of all, this word, if you study the word, it's a verb. It's to cause, to fall, or to trip. You read it, right? But it also can be figuratively, right? You see, they, we say it now, man, you tripping me up right now, brother. We say it now. That's how we speak. Keep that in mind. Get the word for fall. Same verse. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Go ahead. Fall is G4098. It is pipto or pipto. It is. It is. <clears throat> It is through the idea of alighting to fall literally or figuratively. Mm -hmm. To fall literally or figuratively. This is contextually speaking about what? We're going to see. Come down to a lower state. So what is God forbidding? Have they stumbled, meaning causing people to trip and fall? Which one? Yeah, yeah read that. Barack, read that. Let's just look up. Just to lose authority. Also to lose authority to no longer have force. Right. All right. So we're going to read it again. Have they stumbled? Hold on. Too many people. Have they stumbled? Meaning, have they caused people to trip and fall? Right? That they should fall, meaning lose their authority. God, he said, God forbid. But through their fall, get the next word for fall. God forbid. No, no, get the next word in the in the Greek for fall. The word fall here is G3900. Mm -hmm. It is a side slip, a lapse, or a deviation. That is an unintentional error or a willful transgression. So it's an offense, right? Which it makes you falling. It's falling away from grace. All right. Real quick, get First Corinthians. Uh, well, you got Romans. Get First Corinthians one and twenty three. Real fast. Real fast, and we're gonna jump back to this verse. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty three. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. So unto the Jews, what was Christ? A stumbling, a stumbling block. 
So have they stumbled or have they made people trip that they should fall into a lower state? God forbid, because Israel is always going to be the top nation on earth. But rather through their fall or through their offense, salvation has come onto the other Israelites, meaning the, the multitude, the ethnos, the people scattered abroad to provoke you to jealousy. And it did provoke some to jealousy. Absolutely it did. Why do you think in the book of Acts you had thousands of Pharisees that were zealous of the law that believed? But what were they telling Paul? Yo, are you telling these niggas not to be circumcised, brother? What's going on here? Because they still didn't understand it. Do you know that this entire parable that Paul is quoting in Romans 11, he's just teaching something that Christ taught already? Do you know that? Christ taught this already. Anybody know where that parable is at? Be sorry, don't say nothing. Anybody know where that parable is at? Barack, don't say nothing either. Remember, he's speaking to the Jews that are ruling at the time. The one where he's talking about, yeah, the, uh, the Pharisee. Mm -mm. Oh, I know it's actually. Luke 15 and 11. Let's go to Luke 15 and 11. He's and, I'm, and it's crazy. I'm going to show you why he's teaching it this way. Because on to the Jew. Hold on one second. On to the Jew, he becomes what? What did Paul say? He becomes a Jew, but onto the Greek, onto the Roman, what does he become? He becomes as dumb. So he has to speak in a way that they will understand. Just like when you're on the streets teaching, you're like, yo, what's good, my nigga? Check it out, bro. Listen, this, this, that, and the third, we God's chosen people, brother. But when you talk, you a king, brother. You ain't a gangster, man. But when you're talking to a Christian pastor, you got to come at him differently. When you're talking to a Muslim, you got to come at him differently. You got to meet, you got to meet all people on all levels. Paul mastered this, mastered it like no other man. He was a master at when he can become low, he became low. But he also said, I could boast, my man. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee of Pharisees. I know the law like the back of my hand. But he understood things. Now, let's see what Paul was quoting the entire time. All he's doing is teaching a parable that Christ taught. That's all he's doing. Read, Abadi. This is Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. A certain man had two sons. Go ahead. And the younger of them said to his father, father. Give me the portion of goods that, that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Go ahead. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. He took his what? Journey into a far country. He went into these other lands. He got scattered. Go ahead. And there wasted his substance with Riotous living. And he wasted his substance. What was his substance? The commandments. That's right. He wasted that with riotous living, meaning living like a heathen. Go ahead. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, in that land. And he began to be in want. Go ahead. And he went and joined himself to a certain citizen of that country. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. So he became a Roman. He became a Greek, a Scythian, a barbarian, a Galatian, an Egyptian, a Mesopotamian, you name it, a Persian, an Elamite. He became those people because he joined themselves as a citizen. Go ahead. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. 
and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So he began to follow the customs of the heathen. Read. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I pre perish with hunger. So he said, yo, he remembered himself. He bethinked himself and said, I was pretty good over there. We had something that I don't have over here. And I came over here chasing after them, binding myself to them. Go ahead. Verse 18, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. What is he doing? Repenting. So, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Go ahead. And before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. He said, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Go ahead. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Mm -hmm. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And had compassion. His father saw him and had compassion, mercy, grace, greet, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Mm -hmm. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Go ahead. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf. And he gave him a holy garment. He reclothed him. Read any what? 23. And, and kill it. 23 from the top again. And bring hither the fatted calf. Go ahead. And kill it. And let us eat and be merry. And let us eat and be merry. Go ahead. For this, my son was dead. For this what? For this, my son was dead. He said, my son was dead. Why was he dead? Proverbs 21 and 16. This is Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 21, verse 16. Uh -huh. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, law, statutes, and commandments, faith in Christ, go ahead. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He is dead. Read it again. This is Luke chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. But this, my son, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be married. Mm -hmm. Now his eldest son was in the field. Here comes the, 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 the Pharisee. He said, oh, whoa, what's going on in here? Go ahead. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. Mm -hmm. And he called one of the servants. And asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Mm -hmm. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Either transgress. He I. said, listen, unto the, the oracles of God was committed to me. I was here doing the work the whole time. Go ahead. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. Mm -hmm. And yet thou never gavest me a kid. So what was he provoked to? Jealousy. He was provoked to jealousy. Yo, men got to uh, drink waters or something. Manashah, Pash. Brother's falling asleep, man. Read it again. Keep reading. That I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. 
And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. He is not sent but unto the what? The lost sheep of the house of Israel, so they can be found again. This is what Paul is quoting. And I'm going to show you why he said it in the way he said it. Trust me. The sources ain't done yet. Let's go back to Romans. Back to Romans. What was that? Verse 12. Read it. Yeah, read 11 again. Get, Romans get to chapter, Psalms 37 and 24. Romans chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation come. Salvation is come unto the Gentiles uh -huh. for to provoke them to jealousy. Psalms 37 and 24. Read that. This is Psalms chapter 37, verse 24. Though he fall, he nope. shall though he what? Though he fall, uh -huh. he shall not be utterly cast out. Go ahead. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So though he fell, the Lord was still with him, even the Pharisees. Shaquat? <clears throat> a just man falls seven times. A just man falls seven times. That's a fact. <laughs> All right. Uh, verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, what is the world? Israel. That's Israel. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of Israel, what is the riches of Israel? The promises, the covenant, the services of God. Grace, mercy. Go ahead. And the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles and the, dis and the diminishing of them meaning the decreasing of them the decreasing of who? the leaders at that time the decreasing of them be the what? the riches now what you had since you didn't believe well guess what it's going on to the rest of Israel go ahead how much more their fullness? How much more their fullness? Get uh jump two chapters before Romans 9 and 23 real quick. This is Romans chapter 9, verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory. And that he might make known the riches of his glory. Go ahead. It's right, he's right there in chapter 9. Go ahead. On the vessels of mercy. On the vessels of mercy. Who are the vessels of mercy? Israelites. Go ahead. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which he had afore. There goes that word again. Prepared unto glory. And who's glory given unto? It's right there in verse 4 in the same chapter 9. Israelites. Back to, uh, back to 12. Read it again. This is Romans chapter 11 verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. So if the fall of them. The fall of the, the Jews being the people in the land. Go ahead. And the dis, dis, diminishing. And the decreasing of them. Go ahead. Of them, the riches of the Gentiles. The riches of the Gentiles. Paul is saying there's no tribe above another. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither Scythian or barbarian. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. How much more their fullness? So the low, the ruling class of Israel had to be brought low so that all of Israel can return to God. Keep reading. For I speak to you Gentiles, and so, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Go ahead. And by any means, I may provoke to em emulation. 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 Read it again. If by any any means I may provoke to emulation, and by any means, it's a tongue twister. Yeah, by listen. any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. 
and might save some of them. Save some of who? Just us. Those us. Right. Read. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. So if the casting away of these people who are in power be the reconcile. Look up the word reconciling, please. Bring back. What happened? You got to speak up. Huh? Bring back. Bring back. It's exactly what it means. Reconciliation means restoration. Bring back together. Read it again. For if the casting away of them. So if the casting away of the ruling class. Go ahead. Be the reconciling of the world. Be the reconciling, the coming back of the Israelites. Go ahead. What shall the receiving of them be? What shall the receiving of them be? Go ahead. But life from the dead. But life from the dead. It's just like Luke, right? Life from the dead. Jeremiah 30 and 17, real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. I will restore reconciliation. I will restore health unto thee. Go ahead. And I will heal thee uh -huh. of thy wounds. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast. They called thee a what? Outcast. They called thee a what? Outcast. They called you an outcast. Go ahead. Say, this is Zion. Whom no man seeketh after. He said, unto us is this land given into possession. That's Ezekiel 11 and 15. Y'all should know that from the previous class. Unto us is this land given into possession. But you're an outcast. Get thee far from the Lord. This is what they were saying. This is what the Pharisees were saying. This is what the Sadducees were saying. This is what the scribes were saying. Keep reading. Verse 18. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents mm -hmm. and have mercy on his dwelling and he's place. He's going to have mercy on Jacob. Go ahead. And the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner of thereof. Go ahead. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glory, glorify them, and they shall not be small. Go ahead. Their children also shall be as aforetime. And their their children shall also be as aforetime in times past. Go ahead. And their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And he's going to punish all that oppress them, including Israelites. Go ahead. Verse 21, and their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. Meaning that our government is going to come back in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to rule again in the kingdom. This is what this is talking about, read. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me? Saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and ye shall be my people. And you are going to be my people. Finish it up. And I will be your God. And I will be your God. Back to Romans 11, verse 16. Romans 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy. If the first fruit be holy. The lump is also holy. The lump is also holy. Uh huh. And if the root be holy, and if the root be holy, go ahead. So are the branches. So are the branches. What's the first fruit? What's the root? Your ancestors. Like yo, my roots. Family tree. Family tree. Jeremiah two and three.
This is Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the first fruits. And the of, what? The first fruits. And the what? The first fruits yeah. of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. And the first fruits, their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, Moses, Samuel, Elijah. Those are the first fruits. So if the first fruits be holy, so is the lump. If the root be holy, so are the branches, meaning their offspring. Read verse 17. So if the first fruits of the people in the book of Nehemiah and Ezra that we read earlier were holy, what are their children that were cast out? Holy. If Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, and their children were holy, what about all of them that were cast out? They're holy. That's why Paul's saying this. He's saying, yo, you calling them outcasts, you calling them all these names under the sun, but their ancestors are your ancestors. So just as you're holy, they're holy. That's what he's saying. Read. Verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off. And if some of the branches be broken off. Go ahead. And thou being a wild olive tree. And thou being, why were they a wild olive tree? First Timothy's one and nine. This is first tip first Timothy chapter one verse nine. Knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man. You see, a law was not made for a righteous man. The children of Israel were given the law. Because they were wicked. Look at our people today. Without law, look how we are. We're wild beasts. We are wild. Go ahead. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, mm -hmm. for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. Pause, read. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. And any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, any other religious ideology. This is why the law was made, to tame the olive tree. Read it again. And if some of the branches be broken off. Who were the branches that were broken off? That's true. Not in this context. It's not in this context. Read it again, not in this context. You gotta read things in context. Go ahead, read it. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou be a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. So the wild olive tree was already broken off. The ones that were breaking off now are the natural branches, which is the Jews. So since they were broken off because of unbelief, because they didn't believe in Yahweh, Yahweh was a stumbling block onto them. And that wild olive tree was grafted in those Hellenistic Jews, those uh, uh, romanticized Jews, those northern kingdoms scattered abroad. They were grafted in among them. And with them partakest of the root, their ancestors, and fatness of the olive tree. You see that? You see that? Read it again. And if some of the branches be broken off. So if the holy natural branches be broken off. Go ahead. And thou 
being a wild olive tree, uh -huh. were grafted in among them. And the wild olive trees was grafted in among them. You see that? Let's get it real quick. Let's get uh, Jeremiah 11 and 16. The one that was already broken off. <laughs> This is Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 16. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. Mm -hmm. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it. So this is the wild olive tree. The ones that were broken off in times past. But as it says in verse 5, even so at this present time. So this is what's happening during Paul's time. You understand? Uh, let me show you something. Go to Deuteronomy 22 and 9. Because how can the wild olive tree be natural born Gentiles? Uh, Ammonite or uh, Hittite or Canaanite or Moabite or Edomite. How can it be them? Read that. Deuteronomy 22 and 19. And 9. Sorry, 9. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard. Wait, wait, quote it again. Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy 22 and 9. Uh, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard. With man. diverse seeds. With diverse seeds. You see that? Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Why would the Lord use a parable with Paul with something that he said was a sin in the law? Why? If you're not supposed to mix your vineyard with diverse seeds. Remember, the law is also spiritual, brother. So this ain't talking about nobody else but the children of Israel. Straight up. Yes. Israel is the vineyard, right? Israel is the vineyard and the spirit. Yes. Let's go to Sirach 33 and 3 real quick for a precept. This is Sirach chapter 33, verse 3. A man of understanding trusted in the law. And the law is faithful unto him as an oracle. And the law is faithful unto him as an oracle, meaning a prophecy. The law is filled with prophecies and deep mysteries. Brothers, we uh, see that, brother? I just can't do that. It flies over people's heads. How the, the Lord was saying something for your spirit to understand. Huh? Back to Romans. Romans chapter 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off. Read, uh, read 18. Verse 18. Boast not against the branches. So boast not against the natural branches, which was who? The Pharisees. Don't boast against them. Don't. You were just a wild man. That's like. Us being at camp, listen, brother, you got it. Listen, you know what I hate the most? Where your fringe is at, brother? You don't even know he a damn Israelite. You asking him about a fringe on a t-shirt? Why your head is bald? What the hell? Where is your beard? What is, what is happening right now? That's what you're teaching on a corner? Where's your beard? This is the problem because they're boasting themselves, thinking because you have knowledge, now you can puff your knowledge, puff it up, right. but charity edifies. So just as we can't do it, guess what? He was telling that wild olive tree, don't boast against the Pharisees though. Right. Don't boast against them. Read. Boast not against the branches, 
But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. He said, but realize, thou bearest not the root, but the root you. What's the root? Your ancestors. What was given to your ancestors? The promises. Romans 4 and 13. You write about Romans 3 and 1, though. Absolutely. That is a precept for that. This is Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. But through the righteousness of faith. So if that Israelite that was not a law-abiding citizen that was breaking the laws, if he comes back through faith, he can be justified. But then he has to learn the law. That's the order in things. Christ first, then the law. That's the order in things. That's what Paul is saying. Back to Romans. <clears throat> Romans 11, verse 18. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, mm -hmm. but the root thee. That was say then the branches were broken off that I might be drafted in. He said, but yo, why you? Them niggas was going off. They didn't even believe in Christ. Read. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. He said, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Read. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded. He said, don't be high-minded. Don't be puffed up. Go ahead. But fear. Go ahead. For if God spared not the natural branches. He said, if God didn't spare the men that gave you your Bible, that held on to the scrolls, that were the prophets that you knew nothing about because you were in all these other diverse lands. Read. Take heed, lest he also spare not thee. He said, well, guess what? I'm, I'm, I will do the same thing to you. Same thing I did to those men that were circumcised on the eighth day and kept the laws of God. I will cast you off as well. So boast not. Go ahead. Behold, therefore, the goodness and servity, sovereignty, of, severity of God. Read it again. Before, <clears throat> behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. Mm -hmm. For God is able to graft them in again. So God was able to also graft in those Pharisees that once not believed. But if they came into the faith, they can come right back. That's what he's saying, because he did all of this to provoke those men to jealousy. So hold on. Damn, he's saving all these people outside the land? Nah, let me, let me do what I gotta do. Christ gotta be the Messiah. That's what happened. Not to a whole bunch, but it happened. Now, get Jeremiah 2 and 20. Apayak, I'm going to send you some. No, hold on. Now, Paul, once again, was a mastermind. Brilliant. Paul used quotes in Acts chapter 17, you can look this up, of Greek poets to disrespect Greek gods. He did it. Read it. When he said, oh, ye marvelous uh, God of Mars, the unknown, the unknown God. That's in Greek poetry. Yeah, Acts 17. And he's disrespecting them with something 
that is in their culture. So Paul was using this olive tree because there's something that is huge in Greek culture that used the same exact analogy. Apayak, pull up that source that I just sent you. I'm gonna have to scroll down for a minute. Go down. Anybody heard of the Odyssey? We all went to high school, man. You know, y'all know y'all read Odyssey, the Homer. Okay. Scroll down. Keep going. Keep going. I'm gonna let you know when to stop. Keep going, weird pictures, keep going. Keep going, look at that, you the mic, keep going. Hey, yo, keep going. Right there, go up, go up, go up. Stop. Stop. Highlight where it says he found a grove. Highlight that. Yeah. Highlight all of it. All of it, all of it. I it's a lot here. Read that. Come on, huh? You're going off, brother. I ain't even messed it up. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, read that. He found a grove with the clear. This is the book. If you read uh, Odyssey, this is book number five. All right. So if you want to go into it to understand a lot of the things that Paul was saying, this is just quoting it. It's book number five in the Odyssey. Yeah. He found a grove with the clearing all around and crawled beneath two bushy olives. Sprung. He crawled beneath two bushy olives. Go ahead. Sprung from the same root. Sprung from what? The same root. Sprung from the same root. Go ahead. One olive wild. One. One olive wild. Go ahead. The other well bred stock. The other well-bred stock. Go ahead. No sudden gusty winds could never pierce them. But he said the gusty winds could never pierce them. Go ahead. Nor could the sun's sharp rays invade their depths. Nor could a downpour drench them through and through so dense they grew together. So this is something that every Greek would have read. Every Roman would have read. So Paul is using something within their culture to teach them something that Christ did. Revamping the parable in Luke 15. That's how mastermind Paul was. But right. He was likened onto them because he was underneath that those two olive branches, one wild, one uh, well stocked of the same root, but when he went under it, he was protected. That's the analogy. It's the same thing as, it's the same thing as modern time. Like we're gonna give an analogy to say who's the best on the earth. We're gonna name off LeBron James, right? Jordan, it's, it, he's a Paul. Listen, don't sleep on my man, Paul. Man. Mastermind, mastermind. Uh, verse 24. You want to read Jeremiah first? Yeah, read Jeremiah uh, 2 and 20. It's a lot here. This is Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 20. Uh -huh. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. And thou saidest, I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the heart. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant this of is, a This is that wild olive tree. Once again, showing it's who? Israel. He's saying, how you were holy. How did you turn into this degenerate plant? Go ahead. Of a strange vine unto me. But thou... For though thou 
wash thee with nitri, and take thee much so, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, See saith that? the Lord God. Because they were idolaters. Once again, proving that that wild olive tree are Israelites. Uh, verse 24. Romans chapter 11, verse 24. For if thou wert cut out, the, out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to, to nature and to a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Meaning, they had no inclination of believing or knowing in the Most High until it was preached unto them. Same thing he said in chapter 10. How can they praise a God that they've never heard of? How can they do these things if they never understood who Christ ever was? They weren't even in the land. They were following after all these pagan gods. Keep reading. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this ministry. What? Read it again. For I would not, brethren, that ye should not be ignorant of this mystery. That ye shall not be ignorant of this mystery. Go ahead. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Those Pharisees that didn't believe. Those Jews that didn't believe. Go ahead. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until the fullness of the Gentiles come in which is all of these scattered Israelites to believe in Christ and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. That's what Paul is saying. It's that simple. Keep reading. And so all Israel shall be saved. And so what? And so all Israel shall be saved. And that's why Paul said this parable. Is that I didn't even have to read all of that to break it down. I could have just been like, man, go to that verse. Doc. So all Israel can be saved. It's that simple. Because the promise was given unto all of the 12 tribes. Read. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer. Go ahead. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them. When I, when I shall take away their sins. When he's going to take away the sins of who? In context, Israel. But also that wild olive tree. Read. As concerning the gospel, there are enemies for your sins. Mm -hmm. But as touching the election... They are beloved for the Father's sake. Go ahead. For the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Mm -hmm. For as he in time past have not believed God. As he in time past have not believed God, because if you read Sirach 32 and 24, if you believe in God, what do you take it heed to? His commandments. So in times past, he were breaking the law. Go ahead. Yet have not obtained mercy through their beliefs. Go ahead. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. And through your mercy, they also must obtain mercy. Isaiah 59 and 20. This is Isaiah chapter 59, verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression, in Jacob. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, that repent. You don't think Paul read all of this? You don't think Paul, you don't think Paul understood all of this? Matter of fact, get that in Acts real quick. Acts. What's that? 28. Let me see. I'm bound by these chains. Yeah. I'm bound by these chains. Acts, I'm messing with you. Acts 28 and 23. Yeah. This is Acts chapter 28, verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, 
there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, Go ahead. persuading them concerning Jesus. Persuading them concerning Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Both out of the law of Moses. He said out of the law of Moses. He, you don't think he was like, listen, look at this right here. Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 8, 18 and 18, brother. You don't see that? Go ahead. And out of the prophets. You don't think he was like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel? You don't think Paul was doing that? Cutting them to shreds? Go ahead. From morning till evening. From morning till evening. He did this every day when he woke up to when he went to sleep. Debated and taught the gospel of Christ, man. That's what he did. Cutting people up. Why do you think he had to write these letters? These letters was to edify the churches on how they were going off. Well, what did he have to remind the Romans of? Christ died for them too. You understand? Why do you think Paul is reiterating this throughout the entire book of Romans? He is not onto the, he's not a God onto the Jew only, but onto the Gentile. That's in Romans 3. But what does he do in Romans 1? He's showing how perverted Israelites are who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped the creature more than the creator, who began to uh, dive into all these fornications and diverse lusts, homosexuality. Paul was leading up to all of it, teaching them, listen, man, Christ died for them too. I speak to them that know the law, Romans 7 and 1. Reminding them, oh, righteousness is of a faith though. Keep the law, but righteousness is of faith though. But people don't understand Paul. Y'all understand that? When you brought out in Acts 2, remember at the bottom of the list it says strangers of Rome. Strangers of Rome. You have something about it? No, I just want to say that as far as not understanding Paul because they don't realize that he's coming from the Old Testament, like that. Uh, Acts 28 and 23 states. Exactly. So what you just stated. So, and not just the Old I mean, Testament, he's teaching on to what the disciples taught. Because Rome, the book of Romans is written after he began to meet the disciples. Because remember, he didn't always know them. He didn't always know the disciples. He, was, he had the revelation of God and began to do the work immediately. Then finally, when he went, that's why you got to read the book of Acts, man. Then finally, when he went to Jerusalem, they was like, yeah, we heard of you. We heard of you. You good. And you don't think they broke bread with each other? Right. You don't think they you don't think they began to be like, all right, but check it out. Christ said A, B, and C. Christ said this, Christ said that. But Paul was like, okay. So was that they gave him the spirit of the law because he knew no. the law, right? No. Oh. He already had that. Because That's why he was revelation. sanctioned to do it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What, the, what he gave them was the par was the was the parable. That he requoted in a Greek fashion in Romans 11. That's what he gave them. And then what do you think Paul did? He connected dots with, hold on, Isaiah said this, Jeremiah said this, and the law says this. You understand? Any any other questions? Shalak here. Again, it started with Israel and ended with Israel. It started with Israel and ended with Israel. Where's anybody else in here? I don't see it. If I'm missing some, help me out. Somebody in the chat say something too, man. If I'm missing some, help me out. The diversity piece, that's that's the piece. <laughs> and it is in Syrac. Syrac 25, I think it is. Matter of fact, get that real quick. Get that real quick. Get that real quick. 
Quick little preset. That's a good preset. Uh, 25, 30. 20. It's right, chapter 25, verse 20. As a climbing up a sandy way. 26, 26 to 20, my bad. Well, you was about to go into something else. Go ahead, 26 to 20. Ooh, we. Yeah. 26. <laughs> Go ahead. Say right. Chapter 26, verse 20. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field. When you get a fruitful possession of all the field. Go ahead. Sow it with thine own seed. Sow it with thine own seed. Go ahead. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Trust, trusting in the goodness of thy stock, your roots. Go ahead. Verse 21. So thy race. So thy race. Which thou leavest shall be magnified. Which thou leavest shall be magnified. Because you don't think uh, Ben Surah, Sarak, Red Ezra, <clears throat> Red Nehemiah. This was written during the Hellenistic era. So we read all these books already. Why do you think he was saying certain things? Because obviously he had revelation. You understand? Finish it up. Having the confidence of their good descent. Having the confidence of their good descent. So he's saying, listen, man, do what you got to do for your people. Get a wife from your people. Because look what happened back then. See that? Any other questions before we close? Damn devils, man. Stay in the spirit, I heard that. I mean, yeah. All right. I watched one. I was rolling this night and did not finish it. This man, because he said, neither because there are the seed of Abraham that stopped right there. I, said, I ain't dealing with none of these dudes. This dude's weird. This dude's weird, man. Call it out. I bought them a fun to mock with them. This weird, man. Psalm chapter 119. I young. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fell for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Yahweh, to work, for they have made void thy law. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore, I see all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. In the name of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Tawadah Piyat, Amen. Amen.